Welcome to this platform, this is Temi de Familia. In this video, we're going to revise the graduate science paper 2, next sample paper. This paper has three questions, we're going to start with the first question, which has 10 marks. The setup below was used by learners to obtain sun from a mixture of sun and water. So you can see we have uh, A, filter paper, sand, funnel, mixture, the flask, and then we have the part labeled B. Name the apparatus labeled A, one mark. So the A, A is called a beaker. So you name, the name is called a beaker. So beaker, you score one mark. Part B, the liquid labeled B is, so you can see here we have B. So B is the filtered water. So don't say filtered water in exam. It is called filtrate. So the name is filtrate. Filtrate, you score one mark. Part C, State the name of the sand collected in the funnel. So the name of this sand is known as a residue. Then you score one mark. So the name is called residue. You continue to part D. State two safety precautions necessary during this experiment. So safety precautions is an open question, so you can give any as long as it is, as long as it is a correct safety precaution. So for example, you can say, Wear protective gear, so wear protective gears. Wear protective gears. I'm going to explain. Always wear a lab coat, safety goggles and gloves to protect your skin and eyes from chemicals and glass breakage. So always wear protective gear such as safety goggles, gloves and ETC. Another safety precaution is to handle, remember, we are dealing with glass, so handle glassware carefully to avoid breakages. So handle glassware carefully. So handle the apparatus carefully. Handle the glassware carefully to avoid breakages. So filter funnels, the big cars and the flasks are made of glass. Therefore, you need to handle them gently to prevent breakage and injury. Number three, you can say avoid overfilling. So avoid overfilling with water. That is another safety precaution. Sorry for that. So avoid overfilling. So you avoid over overfilling. So what do you mean by this? So do not pour too much liquid into the funnel. It can overflow and cause spills or contamination. Therefore, avoid overfilling. So you can give any and you'll score those two marks. Part E, name two other laboratory apparatus necessary for this experiment. So from apart from this apparatus, for example, apart from the filter paper, the funnel and the flask, each other apparatus do we need? So I'm going to give you one and then you can also give us the other in the comment section. So one is, I can say, you need a measuring cylinder, maybe for measuring the water, the liquid, so measuring cylinder. So it is very important, measuring cylinder. So which other apparatus is, it can be used, for, it is necessary for this experiment? Tell us in the comment section so that you can also learn. Continuing to part F, list three basic science skills that are necessary to carry out this experiment. So which are the skills? So for example, number one is you observe. You observe what is happening. So you can say observation skill. So that is the first uh, skill. So observation skill. Observation skills. Number two, you are manipulating the apparatus, taking the beaker, then pouring water. So that is manipulative skills. So manipulative skills. Handling the apparatus, manipulative skills. You also have, another one is prediction. You can be able to predict. For example, you can tell that the water will pass through and the sun will remain without even doing. So that is prediction skills. So you can give any and you score three marks. So you're done with number one. You score those 10 marks. Let us go to number two on biology. Learners were presented with two types of teeth shown by the pictures in the table below. Complete the table to show the name, structure, and function of the teeth. So here we have two types of teeth. You can see we have you can call this A and B. So the name of A, do you know the name? This, this is called the incisor. The name is called incisor. 
in CISA. Why do we say in CISA? The structure you can see it is a flat, and therefore the shape is T-cell shaped. So the structure is it is T-cell shaped. T-cell shaped. What about the root? This is the root. You can see it has one root. So it has one root. It has one root. The function of the incisa is for biting food. So you used to bite food. So you can start with saying biting food. For biting food. And also for cutting food. So cutting food to small pieces during eating. So used to cut for cutting food into small pieces during uh, eating. Number two, we go to this other type. So this one is called the molar. So the name is the molar. So molar. So the name is called uh, molar. So what is the structure? You can see here. The structure of the molar, it has broad. You can see here the surface here is broad. It's what we call ridges or cusps. So it has a broad and a flat surface. It has a broad surface. You can say you can add with the ridges. So you can say with the ridges. So the spelling is here with the ridges. Some book call it uh, cusps. So cusps, you can say it has a broad surface with cusps or ridges. Another structure, you can see at the roots. So here we have three roots. So it has three roots. So the molar has three roots. It has three roots. What is the function of the molar? The first function is used for grinding food. Used for grinding food. For grinding food. Then another function it is used to crush food into smaller soluble particles during chewing. So for crushing and chewing. So for crushing food. For crushing food during chewing. So those are the structures, the name and the functions, and you score this, you score those 10 marks. Continue to the last question, question number three, which has also 10 marks. The picture below shows a wooden block used in the laboratory during an experiment on measurement. You can see here we have the block. Measure the following dimensions of the wooden block with on mark a uh, height and length. So you can say if this is our length, so this is the length from here all the way to here, you can call the length. And then from here to here, this is the width. Finally, this is the height. So starting with the width, I was able to measure. My width was about 2.2 centimeters. You can also confirm. Measure yours, write your, your, your measurement. Don't copy from your, your fellow students. Just write what you measure. So the width is 2.2 centimeters to score one mark. What about the height? I was able to measure the height from here all the way to up here. And it is around 1.2 centimeters. 1.2 centimeters. And then finally, the length from here to here, it was 2.3 centimeters. 2.3 centimeters and you score those three marks in exam make sure you measure your own measurement and record what you see don't copy so you continue to part d state the type of physical quantity represented by length now that we have two types of physical quantities we have the basic quantity the derived quantity so length is a basic quantity so you can say it is a basic quantity so it is a basic quantity We score one mark. Give a reason for your answer. Why is it a basic quantity? Because it cannot be derived from any other quantity. So it cannot be derived from other quantities. So that is the reason. It cannot be derived from other quantities. It cannot be derived from other quantities. So from other quantities.
So we usually say that basic quantities are measured. For example, length you measure, temperature you measure, even mass you have to measure. You cannot derive it from any other quantity. Unlike the derived quantities, so derived quantities, maybe you can say somewhere here, for derived quantities, they are obtained through calculations. For example, we have things like area. Area, you know that area, to get area, it is length times width. Volume, it is length times width times height. Density, it is mass over volume. So these are derived quantities. Basic quantities, we have seven. For example, length, temperature, uh, amount of substance, mass, and so on. So make sure you know the difference between those two. Continue to part E. Determine the volume of the wooden block in cubic centimeters. So already we have measured our units are in centimeters. And therefore, we get the volume. It is very easy. You know that volume, volume is equal to, so you can say, volume is equal to length times width times height. So you have to, you have to multiply. Our length is 2.3. So 2.3 centimeters. Multiplied by the width, it was 1.2 centimeters. Multiplied by the height, the height was 2.2 centimeters. 2.2 centimeters. So when you multiply all these three, you'll see the answer is so 2.3 times 1.2 times 2.2. We'll see the answer is 6.072 cubic centimeters. So it is 6.072 cubic centimeters. We score those three marks. Part B, part F. Express the volume of the wooden block in its SI unit. So we know that the SI unit of uh, volume is a cubic meter. You have to change the units from centimeters into meters and then we multiply. That is that is a, a very simple way. So we have to convert this from centimeters into meters. So how do we change into meters? We divide by 100. So we need to say volume in SI unit. So volume will be, we change into meters. So it will be 2.3 centimeters. We divide by 100, change into meters. Multiply by, it was 1.2 centimeters you change it divided by 100 to change into meters my finally times 2.2 over 100 so our volume will be this is uh, 0 0.023 times 0 0.012 times 0 point 0 point 0 0.022 0 point 0 0.022. You multiply again, you'll see the answer is 0 0.23. So let us multiply together. You'll see the answer is in, a, in standard form, it is 6.072 times 10 is to negative 6 cubic meter. That is the volume in SI unit and you score those two marks. So that is the end of this paper. Thank you so much for following along. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you are new and share to your friends. Bye bye. See you in the next video.